Hey, my business people, in today's lessons for business and motivation, you can do better over the next 18 to 24 months to overcome big upcoming economic challenges. Pay attention. So I've been busy lately uploading videos to help motivate more of us to get into trade schools and associate degree programs to boost our median incomes over the next 18 to 24 months. Why is there such an urgency in doing this kind of thing here? As I've been stressing over the past couple of years, an alarming number of jobs are becoming or be being automated by robots, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And guess what? As I showed in the last video, the vast majority of jobs held by us are in these kinds of jobs that will be automated. We then have to ask the tough what if questions. What if 90% of our jobs are automated? What will happen to our community? Many experts have already said that once these jobs are automated, they will not be coming back in any way, shape or form. If we have no other jobs to transition to, what will brothers and sisters do next? Or the more sinister question is, what will the government do with us if we are deemed useless? Think about it. What I'm about to show you is not meant to put you in fear or bring you gloom and doom to make you miserable. This is just a wake up call to seriously ask yourself, what will you do if your job is gone next month because these strange world events crashes the economy, causing mass layoffs and escalate the automation of jobs most of our people are in. I want us prepared not to live in fear. It's time to get things in order before we get left way behind. With that question as a backdrop, I will read some startling headlines and show them as well that shows our economy is going through a rather alarming transition across the board. For instance, quote, this is the only grocery store in a three to five mile radius. The Buffalo supermarket shooting event made a food desert in a majority black neighborhood even worse, unquote. Here's a quote from this Market Watch article that I want to touch on. Same Buffalo event. Quote, Tops, the supermarket, uh, grocery store chain, which said Monday it was heartbroken over the senseless violence, is arranging free customer bus shuttles to a different location. This is the only grocery store in a three to five mile radius. We were in the food desert, and I would like to say a food apartheid. This is an area, a gathering place for all of our community, unquote. Reverend Mark Blue, NAACP. Of course, this event in Buffalo that made national news is quite tragic, as you heard. But setting that aside for a second, this pattern of food deserts, where a lot of our struggling communities don't have access to healthy, fresh food, has been happening around the country for some time. With grocery stores in general struggling to keep store shelves full these days, it will compound this problem for our people. In the midst of a worldwide pandemic and raging protests against police brutality, there's another silent crisis wreaking havoc on America's most vulnerable communities, food deserts. I think it's to our detriment. Like, the food deserts are killing us. If you go to the white people neighborhood, they got markets here, markets there. Access to healthy food is a racial and health equity issue. The USDA defines a food desert as an area where at least a third of the population lives greater than one mile away from a supermarket for urban areas 
or greater than 10 miles for rural areas. It is typically located in an area with higher levels of poverty where residents have limited access to healthy and affordable food. And many of these families also do not own a vehicle. So getting to a well-stocked full service grocery store on a regular basis can be very difficult. By these metrics, about 19 million people in America live in a food desert. And Johns Hopkins research shows that food deserts disproportionately affect people of color. Food deserts can be detrimental to its residents' health. I grew up living in a food desert myself in Baltimore. There were absolutely no grocery stores, pharmacies, or retail stores within miles of the area I lived in. We either ate processed food or we bought junk food at the nearest corner store. And well, with the combination of poor diet and other factors, the people in my household had chronic illnesses and one even passed away prematurely because of it. And if you recall my last video, I pointed out how the, the kinds of jobs we choose are in the bottom rung of society for most of us. Go back and watch that watch that video I did and previous videos as well on how we must now choose better trade schools better trades and two-year degree programs to quickly get into much higher paying jobs for the poorest ones among us there are scholarships and other financial assistance programs to help transition from where you are now to where you want to be and where you should be trust me you can do better and it's not that hard Trade schools and two-year schools are not that hard if you pick the right major. Let's continue with the other headlines. And once again, don't fear, just be prepared. In March, President Biden signed a package of nearly $2 trillion worth of aid to help the economy back to its feet. Tucked into that American Rescue Plan is some $4 billion worth of debt relief for minority farmers, part of a federal effort to remedy discrimination in farming through the years. That funding now is being challenged in court by other farmers who seek similar relief themselves and say the program discriminates against them. Even if the legal matter is settled, many black farmers face another hurdle, the requirement to prove they own their land. NBC's Rahima Ellis explains in our Sunday Spotlight. In Wiggum, Georgia, Spencer Hunter has history in this ground. Could you ever imagine this land not being in your family? Hell no, I couldn't. I really couldn't imagine that. Unimaginable because he says his family has farmed here since the late 1800s. And what's planted here? These are peanuts. His grandfather chose to work the land as a sharecropper unlike his enslaved ancestors who had no choice. And he worked to get this, yes. To earn the money to actually buy, buy the this. land. That's exactly right. That he worked as a sharecropper. Yes. It brings tears to your eyes. Oh yeah, because it means something. Scientists <laughs> reported earlier this year, Western states are experiencing the worst mega drought in at least 1200 years. Yeah, they say. Firefighters in the American West and in the Plains are battling nearly a dozen large fires that have burned over 340 square miles in six states recently. More than 3,500 firefighters and support personnel are on the fire lines. Stephanie Sy has a report on the particular challenges that the fires are now posing in Arizona, New Mexico, and Nebraska. Wind-fueled fires continue to ravage parts of the Southwest and Nebraska in what experts say is an unusually early start to the season. Tonight, you may have noticed that filling up your car or truck is especially painful right now. Well, you're not alone as gas prices are at an all-time high. The national average for regular gas now stands at $4.59 a gallon. That's $1.55 more than it was just one year ago. Intense demand and diminishing supply have sent home prices soaring, and there's collateral damage from the housing shortage, record rent increases. CNN's Vanessa Yurkevich is live for us in Miami. How tough is this renter's market? Extremely tough, Brianna. We are seeing rental, record rental prices across the United States, no more so than here in the state of Florida. My
In February, Russia began its all-out military assault on neighboring Ukraine. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the largest invasion of a neighboring country in Europe since World War II. While the whole world turned its eyes to the invasion attempt of Ukraine, which Russia started on February 24th, hot news started to come from the Middle East. Israel continues to deal heavy blows to Assad, one of Putin's best allies. Last night, Israel launched a massive attack on Syria. F-16 warplanes bombarded western Syria. A few days after Iranian and Lebanese Hezbollah forces occupied military bases in southern and western Syria, Israel immediately responded and launched heavy attacks on facilities located in these areas. Many farmers today are under a lot of stress because there are many aspects of their livelihood that they can't control. In today's video, we'll talk about the reasons American farmers are broke. Welcome back, 523 now. The Producer Price Index, it's a key inflation measure for wholesale prices. It went up 11% over the last 12 months, ending in April. And that is including our U.S. farmers feeling that increasing pressure. Gabe Cohen reports on the impact inflation has on them. It's going to be tough. Just six weeks from winter wheat harvest, Brian Brooks is staring down 4,000 acres of barren Colorado farmland, dried out by a brutal drought that could drive food prices even higher. Five million pounds of green beans that we have destroyed, eight million pounds of cabbage that we've destroyed. We have to grind it up back into the ground. That's the only choice we have and hope for a better day. Paul Allen isn't alone. Farmers across the country are destroying millions of pounds of fresh produce as the coronavirus has majorly disrupted the food supply chain. Initially, consumers hoarded items like rice, beans, and frozen foods. The panic buying resulted in empty aisles, and some wondered if the U.S. was in danger of a food shortage. So, Gene, is the supply side crisis that we've all been so focused on starting to go away now? Are we moving on from it, or do you think this is going to be still a problem for a while? Good afternoon, Guy. This is going to take some time. There's an episode just about every day that impacts us in the supply chain, whether it's on the ground, the atrocities in Ukraine impacting energy and agriculture goods flow, the lockdowns in Shanghai, 8.3% inflation, producer prices going up 11%. Hi, Les. You know, not all retailers are putting up poor results, actually, but the retail ETF, the XRT, was underperforming the S&P 500 nonetheless. Coal shares are lower as it joins Target and Walmart with a wide miss on profit and margins, but better than expected revenues. Unlike Target and Walmart, however, Coal's comparable sales fell and missed consensus. Cole said the quarter started well, but lapping the stimulus and poor weather hit sales in April. The company also sharply cut its guidance and announced the departures of the chief merchandising officer and chief marketing officers. The off-mall department store did say that fully financed bids to buy the company will be submitted in coming weeks. Coal shares now, though, are slightly higher as the conference call just wrapped up. For those of you in retail, be ready for a rocky summer. I'm warning you, get your resumes ready as I wouldn't be surprised if big retail store chains announce layoffs uh, uh, many expert, because many experts are expecting a historic recession as early as this fall. So don't ignore the signs. A recent study predicts thousands of local jobs could just vanish to automation. And we've seen it, you know, kiosks at restaurants, robots serving food. Yeah, checking into a hotel, you can all do that automated now as well. Yeah. Las Vegas has the nation's highest percentage of workers at high risk of being replaced by technology. The argument over whether artificial intelligence will eliminate employment is heating up. According to AI skeptics, statistical models lack the creativity and intuition of human employees and are hence destined to do specialized, repetitive jobs. This pessimism, on the other hand, vastly underestimates AI's potential. While AI has already displaced roughly 400,000 manufacturing jobs in the United States between 1990 and 2007, with another 2 million on the way, AI is now automating the economy in a far more subtle way. Thousands of banking jobs are on track to disappear from the U.S. economy. They are not being axed because of policy, but because of technology. For decades, the banking sector has played an outsized role in the U.S. economy. But as technology advances, banks need fewer human workers. 
The Biden administration finally addressing the baby formula shortage months after the problems first began. U.S. Air Force planes now bringing hundreds of pallets of formula from Germany to the U.S. Still, 45 percent of formula is out of stock across the country, and those pallets are not likely going to be making any dent anytime soon. And the situation is getting more and more dire for parents. At least six babies have been hospitalized from the formula shortage. Tonight, one word sums up the feeling along every line of the supply chain. Frustration. Well, the shortages and delays in the global supply chain threaten a total paralysis. China's COVID lockdowns weighing on the global supply chain crisis. Container ships forced to stall near the port of Shanghai, the world's biggest container port, causing major shipping delays. And we're looking at a picture of the cargo vessels and tankers, passenger vessels that are stuck in the Shanghai port, unable to load and unload. Joining me right now is the Port of Los Angeles ex executive director, Gene Soroka. Gene, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. After weeks of flight delays, thousands of canceled flights, and mounting airport aggravation. I had a four hour delay, so I'm feeling a little deflated and just hopeful that we get there. JetBlue and Alaska Airlines both say they simply don't have the staff to fly their upcoming schedule. So, as you can see, there are many challenges ahead for the black community. No need to fear if you're prepared. We have to get ahead of these problems by moving into better paying careers. With these boss moves comes a big boost in our median incomes over the next 18 to 24 months, which will then bring us much, much more money into our sub economy. No need to beg for bankers and politicians to help us at all, as we'll have more disposable income to fund our own digital automated black wall streets right until the next video my brothers and sisters take care